Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to none other than our Holy Bethel Church of God in Christ Sunday, Saturday, Sunday school. How about that? And uh, we're excited to get into the Word of God today. I do want to take the opportunity to acknowledge our leaders, Dr. Roosevelt Allen Jr., our pastor, and also the uh, supervisor of Ladies for Barbados, which is our first lady, Rosetta T. Allen. So we want to, like I said, get ready to get into the Word of God. I believe that with all my heart, God has a word for you and a word for me. And one thing I can say is that God knows how to meet us right where we are. And there is no coincidence. There's no accidents. There's nothing uh, that just happenstance. It, God has who he wants to have right here. So we're going to get ready to go into the word of God. Let's start with a word of prayer and we'll go from there. Dear gracious and heavenly father, Lord, we ask that you would kindly be with us today, Lord. Lord, that you would lead and guide us, Lord, and that you would direct us. And Father, that you would show us your will and your way. And Lord, we do know that your will is the safest place in the whole world. Now, Father, I pray that you allow me to decrease, that you will increase in me, Lord. Give me what things to say, Lord, according to thy word and to thy ways. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Elder King, so good to see you. <laughs> hey, hey, it's good to be seen. Amen. So I want to go ahead and uh, we're going to talk about the lesson. We're going to read these scriptures, but let me uh, go into it. The lesson title is The Lord Has Risen Indeed. The Lord Has Risen Indeed. Here's a few things. We have a Bible truth, which the Bible truth for this lesson is the resurrection of Jesus Christ is our hope. Amen. There's a memory verse, and the memory verse says, And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. That's in Luke 24, 31. Our lesson aimed for today is simply this. By the end of the lesson, we will understand the power of a relationship with the risen Christ. We will reflect on the resurrection of our Savior and uh, develop a desire to share the message of the gospel. Background scripture is Luke 24, 1 through 35, and, and that's the King James Version. And so let's get ready to uh, go into this lesson. In our lesson, we actually begin reading from Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 21, and verses 28 through 35. So I'm going to begin reading those scriptures. <clears throat> Again, that's Luke 24, verses 13 through 21, and 28 through 35, King James Version. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three scores furlong. And they talked together of all these things which would happen. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But the eyes, the eyes had, excuse me, but their eyes were hidden uh, that they should not know him. Verse 20, number 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another? And ye walk and are sad. And the one of them, uh, whose name was Cleophas, Answered and uh, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and have not known that th these things which will come to pass, uh, that uh, that in these, I mean, there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Naz Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed and in word before God and all. Um, and all the people, and how the chief priests and rulers delivered him into, uh, to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it would, excuse me, that it had been, he would, should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, to, today is the third day since these things were done. 
and they drew nigh unto the village whither they whither they went, and they made it and made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he told, I mean, he took bread and blessed it and break all and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within uh, within us while he spake with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scripture? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and have appeared to Simon. And they told him, I mean, and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known to them in breaking a bread. Amen. You just heard me read from Luke, the actual 24th chapter, verses 13 through 21, and it skips to verse 28 to 35. So we have a very unique situation that takes place, takes place here. And what I want you to know is that here are two disciples. These are not part of the actual 12. They're not part of the original 12 disciples. Anyone that is a follower of Christ is considered a disciple. So we have people that were followers of Christ that had left Jerusalem. Well, let me give you a little background on what took place prior to them uh, leaving Jerusalem and what took place. I'm going to go a little bit further back, actually even into Old Testament real quick, because I think it's very imperative that you understand this. And that is Jesus had to fulfill everything that was prophesied and written about him in the Old Testament in order to verify and to solidify that he actually was the Messiah. You know, there are a lot of people, if you think about it, even in today's society, that try to be something that they're not. And the reality is, is that we have to realize God wants us to be able to justify who we really are. In other words, this is the reason why everywhere we go, we need identification. If you're going to drive your car, you have to have driver's license. If you're going to be going from place to place throughout the United States, you have to have some way of verifying who you are. And if you really want people to be able to realize that you are the Christ, which is what Jesus had to do, he wants to show them according to the word of God, it will be unmistakable and implicitly clear that he is the Christ. Now, so all throughout the Old Testament, God would speak through his prophets to prophesy things that Jesus Christ had to perform in order to make sure that the prophets were saying the right thing and that they were not adding something that Jesus could not fulfill because if it was not true, he could not fulfill it. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament would overcome that prophet and would actually overcome and take over their vocal cords and their mouth, and he would have them to say exactly what must be done and fulfilled by Jesus. Now, that's something that a lot of people don't understand, uh, the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. But remember now, in the Old Testament, he had to fulfill every single thing that was done or that was prophesied about every single thing. And so I would say this to you all. If we're going to know and to learn who we are in Christ, we need to make sure that we can find it in the word of God. The Bible talks about how Jesus waxed bold in the scripture. So let's go and look at some Old Testament scriptures so we can actually see where we are and who we are in God. Amen. So uh, let's look 
Uh, you won't have to turn here, but I want to give you some scriptures because uh, there's a lot of scriptures that they gave in this scenario, but I want you to have some scriptures to be able to know that these are things Jesus had to fulfill. One thing that Jesus realized, um, as I mentioned to you all, he waxed bold in the scripture. Well, let me just say this too. <clears throat> when Jesus was born of Mary, he did not come in the knowledge of who he is because we do know before Jesus was born physically, he had already existed as part of the Trinity in heaven. The Father, the Word, Jesus was the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus had already existed, and he had always been. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, for the St. John 1 and 1. And the uh, beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same uh, uh, in the beginning is God. We should know Jesus was from the beginning. He always existed. Him being born in the manger and being born as a, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothing is something that took place, but he had already existed. But I want you to know when he came to earth, he had already emptied himself of all of his pre-knowledge of who he was. So when he came as a babe, he came just like any other baby. He, came, he did not come and he was this super genius kid that knew how to do everything right and knew, no, he did not know. And that's why we thank God for the scriptures because the scriptures reveal who we actually are. So the Bible says this, that Jesus will be born with a scepter. He, will, he knew as he grew older, as he waxed bold in the scripture, it was said that Jesus was going to be or the Messiah was going to be this actual ruling king. That's according to Psalms uh, 45 and 6. It is also prophesied in the Old Testament that he will be born of a virgin. And we do know that uh, when he was born, Mary was a virgin. That was in Isaiah 7 and 14. These are things that if any of these things are wrong, then Jesus could not be who he said he was. Next thing, uh, we find out he was going to be born in Bethlehem of Judea, according to Micah 5 and 2. He would be born in Bethlehem, and we do know he was born of a virgin. We do know he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Another thing uh, that Jesus would teach, and even when he would get old enough and he would start teaching, the Bible says in the Old Testament, he would be teaching in parables. This is why Jesus taught in parables, Psalm uh, 78 and 12. It's important that we see all these things leading up in Jesus' life led to who he is and what his mission was. Next thing you need to know, too, is, you know, you hear about all these good things. And that's one thing about going to the word of God. We hear about all these good things about Jesus and that he's going to be this ruling king and that he would have the scepter of God in his hand and he would be born supernaturally of a virgin and that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. There's a scripture that also says when Jesus will be a, was a child that he, he had to go into Egypt. And we do know that when, when the actual Herod decided to attack all the firstborn of, of uh, Israel, that Jesus was taken from out of Jerusalem into the actual uh, Egypt. Uh, that scripture was according to um, Hosea 11 and 1. And Jesus lived there until the Herod died, till the king died, and then he was able to come back to Bethlehem. So these scriptures had to be fulfilled. But let me just say this uh, also, not only the good scriptures had to be fulfilled, when I say good scriptures, good scriptures are those that, you know, we are, everybody wants to be able to get the blessing receive the blessing, but there's other things that came along with this as a Messiah. The Bible says here, he would be, according to Isaiah 53 and 5, he would be wounded for our transgressions. He would be bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus knew that there's coming a time that as him being our sacrifice for sin, and we should know in the Old Testament, they offered up lambs, they offered up goats and heifers, they offered up different types of animals for certain sacrifice, but Jesus came as the innocent lamb, and he knew he was going to have to be offered up as sacrifice, and he knew, according to the scripture, 
he was going to be wounded, he was going to be bruised, he was going to be chastised, and he knew that not only that, he was going to have stripes laid upon him. The Bible says also in the Old Testament that cursed is any man dying on a tree. It was a curse to be put on a tree and crucified. But he had to do, he did this freely. Didn't have to do it, but he did it freely for you and I. And we should really feel special about that. So in this title, we're going to pick up after Jesus, or in this lesson, we're going to pick up after Jesus has been crucified. And we know that he was crucified and then he was laid in this tomb. And we're going to pick up at uh, chapter 24 of Luke. Let me start out by saying this here, and I'm going to start uh, bringing you all in because we're going to have kind of a discussion, interactive Bible study, which I think is always good. Um, when we talk about the Lord has risen indeed, how important is it to understand that Jesus is written, being that we're his followers? How important is it to know that Jesus is risen? And this could be anyone, because I notice everybody has their cameras off, but how important is it for us as believers to know Jesus is risen? Good morning. Morning. I literally think that is the most important thing that's ever happened in history. Because yes. even if God is God, we still were separated from him. Mm -hmm. Even if Jesus was born and there was no sacrifice for sin, we still yes. would be separated from him. That's so right. God being God is extremely important, of course. We being created was extremely important. Jesus mm -hmm. being born was extremely important. But if death and sin wasn't conquered, we still be in hell and God will still be God and Jesus will still be Jesus. Woo. So the resurrection is literally the most important thing ever. Yes. And that's why they always attack it. That's, that's why it. the devil always attacks it. He's yes. okay if we don't believe Jesus is real. He's mm -hmm. okay if we believe Jesus is born. He's okay if we believe Jesus mm -hmm. is a prophet, a good that's man. Right. But once you find out he's a resurrected savior, everything mm -hmm. turns all the mm -hmm. way around. That's yes, why sir. they attack that. That's why we got to hold on to that. Yes. That's the most important truth in all of history. Because yes, now the veil has been torn. So that's literally mm. the most important thing to me, period. Um, so yeah, thank you for your teaching, by the way. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Wow. That's that's a reality. I'll get to you one second now, Desoko. That is a reality. If there is no resurrection, of the dead. If there is no resurrection of Christ, our Savior, everything is in vain. I'm not going to say much. Elder Slocum, come on in here, and uh, we're going to join in with this uh, comment that um, uh, Minister White has uh, talked about. Uh, good morning, and thank you for that uh, lesson, for the lesson that you're teaching. Yes, I think sir. that it's important that Jesus rose for not only for the reasons that Brother Renaco said, you know, there would be no remission of sins, mm -hmm. but also because of the faith of those that were so-called following Jesus. Um, he needed to come back because clearly the disciples that had walked with him, they were not in total belief. Yes. Thomas still doubted him. He had to put his finger in his side because even though he had been with Jesus, he did not believe, even though the disciples had ran away because of fear of the Roman government and basically were still, you know, holed up in houses mm -hmm. and Jesus walked among them. He still had to show himself to Mary. He still had to show himself to John. That's right. He still had to show himself to all the other disciples. He still, they, they, even though his work was finished when he said it is finished on earth, mm -hmm. their work was not finished. Right. In order to complete their work, they had to receive the Holy Spirit. So they were still not equipped totally had he not risen from the grave and come back to show that the resurrection was real. Yes. Mary talked about the, the resurrection after Lazarus had died mm -hmm. and said, oh, Jesus, he said, no, I know if you had come, you know, uh, if, if you had not come, Lazarus would not have died. And he said, well, you know, he basically told her that I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. He said, mm -hmm. I know about the res. I know about the resurrection that's to come. He said, no, I am the resurrection. So they still, right. even at the point when, when Lazarus died, Mary still understood about resurrection, but they didn't understand that Jesus was the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Well, he still had to confirm scripture even after he died, that he had to get up out of the grave because the faith of those who had been following him 
still was not complete and for, and perfect. They still did not believe in the, and they needed that in order to complete the work going on further at the gospel and everything that we know in the New Testament mm -hmm. that they did. That yes. would not have happened had Jesus not strengthened their faith and confirmed that he was Messiah. And of course, breathe the Holy Spirit. And, and just said, receive you the Holy Spirit when he told the disciples before he was ascended, receive you the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All that stuff still had to happen. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing, sir. Uh, wow. Uh, yourself and uh, Minister White, you really just got into it and covered it really well. Because if we don't take in that Jesus is risen, what are we living for? I want you to know the people during that time, and these are the, the, the children of Israel and, and those that weren't, the Romans, they had a fear. Every single person on earth had a fear of death. And the reason why there was such a fear of death because death was considered the unknown. It was considered being placed and put into outer darkness without understanding and void. And so what Jesus does he comes to give us life, not just life. You see, there were people who rose from the dead before Jesus. We read in the Old Testament, there were people who we saw that had died and they came back to life and, and the prophets had prayed for them and they came back to life. One boy that had died, uh, Elijah came and laid on him and prayed for him and he came back to life. And there were others, even a whole slew in the, in, um, the book of Daniel of soldiers. And they said, he said, prophesy to these bones and that they would live. And all these people came back to, to life. But there was no one who ever had died never to die again. There was no one who ever died as a sacrifice for all mankind. And there was none of them who portrayed and said that they were the son of God and that they would come back in majesty and in power. Well, this story it shares about how the disciples were after Jesus was crucified. Listen, let's just do, can we just do real talk today? This is gonna be real talk. Real talk is this. It's easy to talk and proclaim about the Lord as long as you're not going through something. Don't say you believe in the resurrection and you make your personal problems sound greater than that. You can't say, I believe in the Jesus being the Messiah and he took away my sins, but I don't know if he can take away my sickness. He actually overcame death, but I don't know if he can overcome what I'm thinking about and what I'm going through in my life. I want you to know it's a great thing to have the Lord in our life. It's a more powerful thing to have the Lord in our, our lives. So what happens here, if we'll start in Luke, the 24th chapter, now verses 1 through 12 talk about what things transpired. At that time, Jesus had already been ministering for three and a half years. He had already been working miracle after miracle after miracle. He had been telling his disciples that he was, he was the Messiah and that he was going to give his life as a sacrifice for sin. He had told them he was going to be crucified. And then after three days, he would raise from the dead. They heard all these things. But when they saw Jesus being crucified, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody sounds really good when you're on top of the world, but we don't know who you really are in Christ until you go through something. That's real talk. Till you, till you can make a stand for the Lord when every day is not uh, sunny. When, you, when your finances are bad, when there's sickness in your body, when it seems like your closest friends are turning on you, when your job is seemingly about to fire you, when it seems like you don't know where you're going to be able to get money to pay your bills, that's when we'll know who really is believing on the Lord. Let's just be real. So in this time, the Bible says in Luke 24, it begins uh, uh, verse 1 through 12, talking about three, three of these ladies who came to see uh after the Lord had been crucified and placed into the, the grave, they came to add uh, fragrance and spikenard and everything like that to the body of Christ. And they looked into the sepulchre, which is the tomb in which Jesus was buried into. Now, there are three ladies that they mentioned. They mentioned Mary, the actual Madeline. They uh, mentioned also Chloe. And then they also mentioned uh, that there was another Mary, the mother James. 
these ladies were going there. And let me just say it like this. The reason why none of the disciples or the apostles were there is because they were in fear of their life. It is hard to believe God will protect you when you've seen your savior crucified. Now, let me just say this real quickly. They did not have, like we have Bible, we have Bibles, we have concordances, we have all types of, we're looking back, excuse me, we're looking back thousands of years at what was done to Jesus. They're right there in it. And they don't know they're gonna be protected because if they kill Jesus, who you think were going to be next to the disciples? So they're in fear. And when these ladies go into the sepulcher, they don't see Jesus there. They don't see his body. And they're thinking, oh, my God, they've taken the body of Jesus. And then there were two angels there. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know this. God will always leave breadcrumbs. God will always leave signs. God will always leave something to identify that Jesus is alive. There will never come become a time where God will leave us forsaken, alone, and in total confusion about Jesus. He will always show signs in his word. So what happens is these two angels tell them, go and tell the, the apostles that Jesus is risen. And that's what they do. They go back and tell them. And when the apostles hear that, they're not thinking, oh, yeah, this is what he said. Hey, do you remember him again? What we read was not written at this time. What we read was not written. So it's hard to remember everything that everyone says, and I mean, that Jesus said in three and a half years. And you have to understand, too, when Jesus talked, he talked a lot of times in parables. So sometimes they couldn't differentiate. Is this a parable? Is he for real? One time the disciples said, hey, Jesus, you, you want to eat? Jesus said, yeah, I, I want to eat. They said, well, we're going to go get some bread. Jesus said, okay. They go back and bring them bread. Jesus says, well, I have meat you know not of. I have what? Jesus said, I have meat you know not of. Oh, I guess that means he had some He had some food already. I thought he didn't have any meat. I thought he was, I thought he, you know, he said he was hungry. Jesus said, I'm not talking about that meat. He was talking about his meat is to do the will of my father, which has sent me. So let's just think about it. Here's a person that may be talking parable and natural at the same time, and they trying to differentiate because all this is new to them. So all of a sudden, when, P when Peter and some of the other disciples hear that the body of Jesus has been taken, the sepulcher is empty, and, 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 and we don't know what happened to him, they don't believe, wait, the what? No, I don't believe, uh, the, 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 he's risen. That's the last thing they're thinking about. Oh, I'm going to see it for myself. They ran to the sepulcher and they look inside and they don't see Jesus at all. And they're like, where could they, what? The Romans done did it again. This is a thought. But there's something that's there in that sepulcher that was a sign that Jesus had risen. His clothing were folded neatly. You know, when you're going to, when you're coming to take away somebody and steal somebody's body, and if you want to take them, whether you're taking them in nude or not, you don't just go, well, well, since we're going to take them away, let's let's go ahead and fold his clothes nice and neatly so that we'll make sure we have, oh, that got a wrinkle in it. Hold, oh, let me go flip that. Ah, now we got it nicely folded. And then no, if somebody was stealing something, thieves don't take a long time at the scene of the crime. Thieves do not take a long time at the scene of a crime. They will come in, get what they want, and leave, and they, don't, they will leave no sign that they have been there. Here's the thing. Now we go into the lesson where we start today, as I began reading earlier, verse 13 through 21. We find out that the disciples go back in hiding. They don't know what happened to the body of Jesus. They don't know what is taking place. They think these Romans have taken his body and seized it. They don't know what's going to happen, but they do know this much. If they would kill Jesus, they're trying to kill us next. Question to the uh, group. How do you think it feels to be wanted and to, to feel like people want to kill you for your faith? How can you imagine what that would feel like 
People want to kill you for your faith in God. Anyone? How would it feel? How do you think it would feel? People want to kill you for your faith in God. Good morning. Morning, Sister Rose. Right. Ross. Okay, this is my thinking now. Man, that's that's a tough, that's a tough cookie there. Yeah. How would I feel? You know, somebody want to kill me because of my belief. Oh my goodness. You know, it's hard to explain that because you don't know what you would do until that time comes, you know, mm. until you It'd be a, you'll be approached, you know, but I'm hoping I have the mind of Christ that I still stand forth and believe yeah. in what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like said, we don't know how we're going to respond when we oh. approach something, when something approach us. But we need to prepare. Amen. And the reason, I, the reason I say that is because the Bible says that in these last days that they're going to be at this coming a time where you won't be able to buy or sell anything unless you accept the mark of the beast. Which is a satanic, uh, a satanic alliance. Guess what? They're gonna kill us. Jesus said, "If they've hated me, they're gonna hate you also." Don't ever live such a life uh, that you forget that we are followers of Christ, and that God is wanting to make sure you understand that it's not all a bed of roses. This road was paved in blood. Uh, uh, um, Minister Eric Sutton, I mean, Deacon Sutton, come on to talk. Good morning. I hope y'all can hear me. Yeah, I hear you. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I think we're already in that time. Um, mm -hmm. As you hear uh, Minister White always saying in different countries, but here, uh, everything you see, they, they attack Jesus every which way. You see that parade. They have uh, hey, Jesus is hanging. Um, you should look at their carnivals that they they right. did in uh, I think it was Brazil before that storm. They they're already doing it. Um, That's right. We're already in that time where they they really do want to kill us. Um, it's just not quote unquote politically correct yet. So as you just said, we do have to be ready, and we know that that God has us um, has us covered, and the, the word says that um, the days will even be shortened for the elect's sake. So we we. We just have to continue to pray, continue to fast, and continue to stay before God and continue to trust him. Amen. Amen. That's all awesome. Thank you. Very, very good. We've got to because we're already in these last days. And listen, don't fool yourself. Uh, people are watching what you say. Let me just show you, uh, show you, share with you all one of the tricks of the enemy that he's doing that I see even in these last days. He's taking our titles and using it from devilish people. He's taking the title of believers or like Christian and words like religion. There used to be nothing wrong with saying I'm religious. Nowadays, you can't even say you're religious. Now, now when you if people, if there used to be nothing wrong with saying you're evangel uh, evangelical. But nowadays, you say you're part of the evangelical uh, scene, then it's a bad thing because there are people that are taking our titles and they're living like devils because they are. Satan knows that a lot of believers, a lot of true believers, they listen to what people say and they just take it in their mind and they'll say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to change the right thing and make it something wrong and we're going to use the title of it so people don't even want to use the title. And then you've got ungodly, uh, perverted uh, people that are going out and they're saying, oh, praise God, bless the Lord saying all these things, and they themselves aren't living it. This is why the Bible says we should be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Uh, I saw Sister White. I, I don't know if you want to say something because I saw your microphone was off a few times. Uh, did you want to say something? I don't want to overlook you. No, sir. Thank you. Okay, not a problem. I just saw that microphone going on and off. Yeah, so what happens is now the disciples are in fear of their life. They're scared. Let me tell you, when you're talking about having your life, you know, I was in the military. I know um, Elder Slocum was in the military. We got others that were in military. And they would remind us that, don't you know, we're never off duty. Because if they need you, you could be at a moment's time. Uh, you're going to be called to war. And when you go to war, it's not like television. 
oh, there's only about five people at the front, and then they'll handle those situations. Let me tell you, I was a historian for the military, and almost every great war that we had started with a sneak attack, and the enemy has not changed. I dealt with Desert Storm, Desert Shield. I also dealt with the Granada invasion. I was with all three of those wars. And I, I, I know uh, Elder Slocum could tell you uh, things that they did also because he was a commander uh, in the Navy. So again, when we're dealing with war, war is to annihilate the enemy. It is not to hurt the enemy. It is to destroy the enemy. And I want you to know the devil have come to kill, steal, and destroy. And the disciples are seeing it because they are thinking they're under the mentality that Jesus is going to establish his kingdom here on earth. And so if Jesus establishes his kingdom, we're in there, baby. We're in there. We're good. But they find out what they thought Jesus was trying to establish, they killed him. And they saw him murdered. They saw him marred. And they saw him beaten. And they saw him bruised. And they saw him scourged. They saw all these things take place with their Savior. And they, let me just say this, you know, and I, I'll just say this, and I, I, I just want to be for real with everybody. What we see on television and the stories we hear about Jesus' crucifixion was nothing like the real thing. Nothing like the real thing. Until you've seen chunks of a person's meat, his, the actual meats taken in off of their body. And listen, they weren't, television has, okay, we're going to hit right there on his back. And then because we got the cat of nine tails, we're going to pull it back and it's going to remove some of the meat and scratch his back up and he'll be fine. And he'll, he was unrecognizable. They beat him so bad. They were not trying to hit him on just his chest and on his on his uh, 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 legs or other things. They were hitting him on private areas, er everything. And Jesus refused to die until he had fulfilled everything that had already been prophesied. He refused to die. That's a ma that's major. So here these disciples are. They're scattered out, and then two disciples. These are not the apostles. One's name is Cleophas. The other one, they don't tell his name. They were leaving from Jerusalem after Jesus' crucifixion. And they had been now, he was crucified three days ago. They're going to this place called Emmaus. And while they're going there, which is about seven miles away, they're walking. They're having conversation about what transpired about Jesus and how they lied on him and they cheated and then they, 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 they did all these things and crucified him. And then Jesus comes and he's standing there with them and begins to walk with them and ask them, is it okay if I walk with you? Now they can't recognize because the Bible says that they could not recognize Jesus because it was withheld from them. I want you to know something about our God. If there's something he doesn't want you to see, it doesn't matter how many people, how many they didn't even describe his face, it won't even enter into their minds who Jesus really is. Bible says it like this. No man, Jesus said, no man can come unto me. You can't just make up your mind to get saved. No man can come unto me except the Father which have sent me draw him. You can't even get saved unless the Father is drawing you to Christ. Sometimes people just think, oh, I'll make up my mind and I decide I want to uh, 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 come to Christ. I want to live a godly life now. No, you can't make up your mind unless the Father draws you. You can't even get saved. So here it is. It's not even revealed to them that this is Jesus and they're walking. And while they're walking and they're talking about him, the actual person that they think is a stranger, because it was common during those days to walk along with a stranger going the same direction. He, Jesus asked them, what are you so upset about? They're in shock. What? What? Where are you? And here's what they're saying to Jesus. I guess you're the only person in Jerusalem. They hadn't heard about what happened. What in the world? Where you been? They said, what are you talking about? What happened? Jesus said, what happened with what? What happened with what? I mean, come on. Just, we got to be real with this. This is headline news. 
This is CNN, MSNBC, this is Fox, this is everybody on every, there's no television station, we already know that, but you better believe there is a gossip line, there's a news line, there's a channel where everybody's talking with each other, and it is the big news of the day. Did y'all hear about it? Oh, you talking about Jesus crucified? Yeah, they crucified him. Man, they, they, they said he lied. No, no, they when he lied, they, they lied on him. They lied, they were priests. Priests, that don't mean nothing. They were, you know how people talk. We know how people gossip. We know how people say things. It was big news. Well, what happened to them apostles? Man, they hired now. They said that, you know, they're going to try to take over the city. That's why they reinforced it with more Roman soldiers, man. You see all those soldiers? They already got to hit out for all the disciples, man. Well, man, uh-uh. You do know there's a thing called guilty by association. And not just the disciples were being hunted, but any disciple, if you say you're following Christ at this time, you are being hunted because they think that you are being just like Jesus. And people are scared. And I appreciate uh, Sister Ross's um, uh, answer because she's just being real. Anybody can talk bold when you're not under that type of scrutiny and you're not in fear of your life being taken. Anybody. So they're walking and Jesus, he's like, okay, well, let me just say this to you all. Where's your faith? Where, where, is, your, where is your trust in God? Have it not been written in the word of God? that these things must take place, that the Messiah must be crucified or killed, and that after three days he will be risen from the dead. And then the Bible says, and this is in between those scriptures, in between verses number uh, verse number 22 to 26, I mean 27, Jesus began expounding from Moses all the way through each of the prophets. You see, God is so strategic. He has these disciples that are going to this world, going to Emmaus, but he has enough time because there's, there's like seven miles. That's a long walk. And in between that time, he's explaining to them how all these things must take place and what the scripture says. And then when they were about to get to the town, the Bible says that they said, hey, listen, it's late. Why don't you come and stay with us and have dinner, eat with us again? They can't even tell that this is Jesus. Again, I want to say this too. God has the power to be able to block our minds from sin. Sometimes, and I'm just going to be, let me just deal with this naturally. Sometimes we can be dead to a situation. And because we don't see how God's going to work it out, we can be to a point where we're like, you know what? I, it's just not going to work out. Some of you know for yourself, and I've been unknown for even myself, sometimes I've let other people kill my dreams because it didn't seem like it was working out fast enough. And I want you to know that whatever that thing is that God has told you he's going to do, he is going to fulfill it. And he does want you to know that just because it wasn't in your time doesn't mean it won't be on his time. Sometimes when it comes to God, we want things to work out right now. Boom. Just like that. Work it out, Lord. We don't want, I don't want to go through nothing. Work it out, Lord. Work it. But there are times when God will take his time about a thing. So Jesus was pretending like he was getting ready to go to another town. But they said, why don't you just come and work with us? And so what they did is they went and got with Jesus. And Jesus came over their house. And they ate together. And when they were getting ready to eat, Jesus goes and takes the bread. And he breaks the bread. And when he breaks the bread, which reminded them also of communion that Jesus had, all of a sudden their eyes became open. And they realized, oh my God, it's the Lord. It's, it's the Lord. It's Lord, it's, it's you. And the Bible says, and then Jesus disappeared right in front of them. He's gone. Oh my God. When you really realize, when you really believe that Jesus is Lord and he really reveals that to you and you realize this is something that you thought it was dead, it wasn't real, and then it's really real in your life, you want to go tell any and everybody. They were like, I know we just traveled these miles, but listen here, we're going to stay here about, yep, we've been out about one hour. We're getting ready to head back to Jerusalem. We're getting ready to go back and tell the disciples, tell the apostles, we're going to find them and let them know Jesus. Listen, when you are excited 
about the word of God. My God. How then can, it's, I think something wrong with me. Because <laughs> look, I'm going to share Jesus. I don't care if you got one eye, one leg, uh, the, the three hands. It don't matter who you If you're a boy, girl, man, woman, dog, cat, don't care. I'm going to share Jesus with you if you give me opportunity. You know why? Because I'm living in a life that it was not my own. Jesus gave his life, so it's time for me to give my life for him. If he would die for me, I'm going to live for him. Saints of the Most High God, my God. If there's anything I want you to know, we've got to live for God. When they came back and saw those disciples, the apostles, they shared their story, but the apostles had a story too, because Peter said, I saw them too. I saw them with my own eyes. God wants us to know that Jesus is the reason for this season and his resurrection, as, as Minister uh, Renaco said, and Minister White said, his resurrection means everything. And if we will believe the word of God, believe that Jesus is alive and well, we should be always excited and always readily available to share the word of God. Because when the rest of the disciples heard that Jesus was risen and all these people seen it, the Bible says over 500 people saw him at one time after his resurrection. So we have a risen savior. It is, I said, time uh, right now where we're, we're going to stop at this point here. We have a lot I love to be able to say, but you know what? It's okay. Uh, we got a lot to say. We, that's all of us as the body of Christ. And I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for coming out today, for joining in with Bible, uh, with, uh, with uh, our um, Holy Bethel uh, Bible study. It is not, uh, we do not take it lightly. Again, we thank God for our leaders, Dr. Mm. Roosevelt Allen Jr. We thank God for mm. our co-pastor, uh, uh, supervisor of women for Barbados, uh, Rosetta T. Allen. We thank God mm. for them, and we thank God for each and every one of you. Um, without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and end with a word of prayer. Just as a reminder, we do have uh, some of the youth uh, events taking place over at Holy Bethel. <laughs> I do know they're starting at uh, 12 o'clock, I believe it was. Uh, Elder King. They're starting at 1130. 1130. They're starting 1130 for the Sunday school. Yes. And then 12 o'clock, they're going to have the youth choir rehearsal. And then they'll go into the Easter um, hunt, other festivities. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, that's our missionary. Missionary, how you guys yourself. See, I didn't even recognize you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Amen. God bless you. Happy Would you Easter. end us with a word of prayer? Would you mind end us with a word of prayer? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lord, we love you. Were you done with your everything you were going to say, Elder Scott? Yeah. It's that time. Okay. But Elder okay. Scott, can I yes, decide Amen. before we, we end with the word of prayer? Um, I just got approval for another announcement. It is it didn't make it into the um into the regular announcements. But uh, but the pastor has approved that the marriage ministry will continue with their Zoom call next Saturday at 5 p.m. on the uh, the ten dollar date night uh, that uh, we had. And we we're going to follow up with a Zoom call for the married couples to tell us how they spent the, the ten dollars. So, mm -hmm. again, we have approval for uh, that Zoom call for next Saturday at 5 p.m. I know we've got a few married couples on right now. So if you can put that on your calendar, God bless. Yeah. God bless you. And Sunday school teachers, please stay on for literally one minute after everybody else hangs up. All the Sunday school teachers that are on, please stay on for one minute. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, God, that we are on this side of life. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, the cross. We thank you, God, that he rose after he died and he walked this earth. We thank you, God, that you, your son, Jesus, is alive and well and still making intercession for us in 2023. And so, God, we just say hallelujah. And we do have a lot to tell because you have been good to us and we are going to tell it 
we are going to tell it in our lifetime. We want to tell 500 people about Jesus. And so, God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, God, even now mm -hmm. for everything that will take place physically at the church on today. We thank you, God, for tomorrow's service. If you allow us to see tomorrow, God, we just thank and praise you for you being wonderful. Thank you for looking on every church that's lifting up the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Holy Bethel Church of God in Christ. Oh God, we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus for Pastor Allen. We thank you for our First Lady. Lord, we thank you for all our Sunday school teachers and every student who shows up every week in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, Justin Slocum. Thank you for joining in. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen. Yeah.